हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम प्रोफेसर वंदना चक्रवर्ती डायरेक्टर लाइफ लॉन्ग लर्निंग एंड एक्सटेंशन इन एस एन डी टी वीमेंस यूनिवर्सिटी टूडे वी गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ एन एफ एस ग्रंटविक टू एडल्ट एजुकेशन एन एफ एस ग्रंटविक इज अ वेल नोन नेम इन द एरिया ऑफ एडल्ट एजुकेशन अ डैनिश थियोलॉजियन राइटर philosopher historian educationist and politician grundwig was a pioneer who is credited with establishment of the first adult education institution in the world let us look at the learning objectives of this module in this module we will recognize nikolai frederick severin grundwig as an innovator of the first adult education institute examine the impact of danish socio cultural setting on grundwig and his thinking determine the impact of folk schools on danish people grundwig is a well known name in the area of adult education as i said son of a parish priest grundwig was disillusioned by formal schooling in his time he felt that this schooling was dissociated from social reality grundwig was a pioneer who is credited with establishment of the first adult education institution in the world he started this institution at reuding in denmark in the year 1944 establishment of this institute in reuding was followed by creation of many more adult education institutions including the one in raiseling started by christian cold a disciple of grantwick and known by many others as danish socrates son of a shoemaker cold preferred teaching over his family trade and influenced danish folk education in the 19th century the adult education institutions known in denmark as folk high schools were primarily rural institutions and admitted peasant boys of 18 years of age and above and trained them in the historical and cultural traditions of nordic nations it is to be noted that entry into these institutions did not require admission test there was no examination at the end of the course and no certification either it was an institution where there was free and frank interaction between the learner and the instructor in an atmosphere of freedom and comradeship what was the situation in denmark in the 19th century today denmark is one of the developed nations of the world it has a literacy rate of 99% for 15 plus years population it ranks fourth according to 2016 estimates for human development index with an estimated hti of 0.925 what kind of a country was denmark when grundig was born the danish realm had in its possession norway and german speaking schleswig and holstein it was ruled by absolutist monarch the prince regent and his advisers had in nine, in 1780s carried through a series of reforms which put an end to the feudalistic relationships in agriculture most of the danes lived in the countryside ignorance and backwardness pervaded the countryside 80% of the people living in the countryside were illiterate free primary education was introduced from 1739 but it had little impact the peasants were ruthlessly exploited they had lost their spirit for innovation and initiative the educated people received their education at the university of copenhagen teaching was a mechanical grind krundwig said the spirit of life is the heart not the head but the heart was never touched in such education he also said everything that could touch the heart of common man from kingo's hymns 
to the old ballads and sagas, these friends of enlightenment reckon as harmful superstition. The Napoleonic War was a turning point as far as the history of Denmark is concerned. France and Great Britain, the two nations at loggerhead, had their eye on the Danish fleet. In 18001, Denmark refused to abandon its armed neutrality pact with Russia and other Baltic powers. The British Navy, under the command of Nelson, attacked the Danish fleet. Denmark was forced to sign a truce agreement. In 1807, the British again attacked the Danish fleet. They started bombarding Copenhagen. A large portion of the city was burnt down. The English captured the entire Danish fleet. Angered by this, the Danes sided with Napoleon. Denmark's foreign trade was practically destroyed. England seized around 2,000 Danish ships. The Treaty of Kiel was signed. Denmark had to secede Norway, which was gifted to the King of Sweden. The, in, the entire state went bankrupt. Denmark reached the lowest point in its history. Let us have a look at Grunwick's life sketch. Grunwick was the youngest child of his parents. He was born at Udby in South Sheeland. His father was a parish priest. Grunwick in his later life said, that he learnt the essential things of life from two women, his mother, descendant of an illustrious family, and Melanie, a crippled woman who was provided shelter by his father. When Grunwick was nine years of age, he was sent to a clergyman called Felt, who lived in Jutland. Thereafter, he spent two years studying and at Arles Latin School, he was completely disappointed with the mode of teaching there. He found it dull and lifeless. He said that in the school, books were read to, for the sake of languages and languages learned for the sake of grammar. He term, termed this school a black school. After graduation from the university, Grunwick taught as a private tutor. He was then appointed history teacher at Shuboski Institute in Copenhagen. While teaching there, he developed a humanistic view on education. What was Grunwick's role in history? Grunwick witnessed the time when the great agricultural commissions were thoroughly changing Denmark. It was a social transformation. The peasants of Denmark, especially the middle peasants, became a driving force in Denmark. Krenwick also witnessed the British attack on Copenhagen and the seizure of Danish fleet in 1807 and the secession of Norway in 1814 and the economic bankruptcy in 1813. These incidents influenced Krenwick's thinking. He was also aware of French Revolution in 1789, though he was a child then. Krenwick pondered over the unsettling events of his time and contemplated how Denmark could be saved. How did Grunwick's thoughts evolve? Grunwick's earliest statements on education date back to 1802. He was then a student of Copenhagen University. We know from his unpublished diary entries that he was then opposed to physical chastisement and rote learning. Between 1815 and 1830, Krunwick reached a point of clarification in his thought. He arrived at the concept of Danishness. It was an expression of national identity. He also discovered that the spoken word was instrumental for the enlightenment of the people. Krundwick visited England thrice between 1829 and 1831. He went there to study Anglo-Saxon manuscripts. 
housed in British archives. This archival material made him appreciate the education system in England. In the colleges of the universities of Cambridge and Oxford, where students resided in the university campus, he saw a free and open relationship between the teacher and the student, which permitted an informal exchange of experience and acknowledge both in lecture hall and outside. This led him to contemplate on establishing similar institutions in Denmark. This he recorded in the introduction to his book on Noradic mythology in 1832. At that time, he also thought of civic and religious freedom and respect for humanity. Democratic reforms were initiated in Denmark in the 1830s. The first session of the Provincial Advisory Councils took place in 1835-36. The debates enthused him greatly. He termed it Secular Resurrection of the World in 1836. He wrote his important work on education, The Danish Four-Leaved Clover. Many other essays and books followed. Let us now look at Grunwig's idea of school for life. Grunwig wrote, even if all our institutions were excellent and fit for their purpose, still they would have a great lack so long as we we lacked a school for life of the people and citizens in which we all can and must share and which we must also regard as the natural root and spring of all our living efforts. Grunwick also wrote, Would it be exaggerated to say that three-fourths of the students of Copenhagen who can hardly write Danish know no other history than that of which they have learned some fragments at school and at the university and finally have no higher goal for their studies than at the most to get a first class at the final final examination and after that a well-paid job he further wrote we the so-called educated men are educated not to practice for ourselves a stronger, nobler and kinder life, but to offend, vex and exalt ourselves over the multitude and over each other and never ask what we ourselves have done or can or will do. To escape from such a predicament, Kranvik proposed that boys from the countryside should be provided with such training and education about life itself so that they could creatively mold their lives and they could do it themselves. He proposed the establishment of folk high schools where these boys would be taught Danish history and traditions which would root them in the Danish national culture. What were the folk high schools of Denmark. The folk high schools started in Denmark way back in 1842, though effective initiation was made in 1844 at Reuding near the border between Schleswig and Denmark. It was established by intellectuals from Copenhagen, Schleswig and Kiel with a program based on Grundwig's educational philosophy. The Reuding Folk High School, therefore, was the first adult education institution in the world. Reuding was followed by many folk high schools like Reisling, Merrillist, Udlam and others. After the disastrous war with Prussia in 1864, the folk high school movement proliferated. Hundreds of folk high schools dotted the Danish countryside. Young boys and girls were trained in these folk high schools in the art of life. Later, these individuals were instrumental in developing one of the most effective cooperative movements of the world. 
and such cooperatives changed the face of rural Denmark and transformed the country into a highly egalitarian and industrialized society. Thus, it can be rightly said that adult education was instrumental in Denmark's social and economic transformation. The Danish folk high schools today, how are they? Let us look at them. The Danish folk high schools is a school for adults which emphasizes on general mind broadening education. The concept of folk high school is the single most original contribution Denmark has made to international thinking about popular education. In Denmark, popular education encompasses the human being's entire cultural environment. The Danish tradition of popular education rests on, rests on a solidly democratic outlook. No one can claim privileged access to the absolute truth. There are around 70 folk high schools spread across Denmark, most of them in rural areas or smaller towns. Some are quite old, the others more recent. Some are large and can, ac can accommodate several hundred students while others have room for around 30 students. Some are quite wealthy others less well off. Some are architectural gems, but others are not so. The most important thing about folk high school is not its appearance, but its atmosphere. The task of academics here is to create a climate where culture is a reality. The folk high schools are residential. They become microcosmic societies with students and staff living, eating and sharing the same daily routine together during the course. The, most of these schools are run, run courses of four to eight months during the winter and short courses of two weeks during the summer. The winter courses are chiefly intended for young students of 18 to 23 years. The shorter courses for students of all ages. Over the past few years, 50,000 students, around 2% of the Danish population, attended folk high schools. There are other types of folk high schools apart from Grundtvigian model. The folk high schools differ in their focus. They are, there are Christian or spiritual schools that focus on spiritual approach to life. There are gymnastic and sports schools that concentrate on physical education. There are life schools that pay more attention to exercise, diet, personal development. Then there are specialized schools which cater to those interested in a particular discipline of study like art, music. All these schools offer general education too. The youth folk schools cater to 18, 16 to 19 year olds and senior schools target older population and have short courses throughout the year. The variety of courses offered in folk high schools include uh, literature, history, psychology, ecology, information technology, communication, education, music, drama, sports, outdoor pursuits, dance, art, art appreciation, photography, pottery, dressmaking, drawing, uh, development studies, international politics and so on. Let us now summarize this module. We learnt about Grundtvig in this and his contribution to adult education through the folk schools of Denmark. Grundtvig has a special place in the history of adult education. He was the first to establish an adult education institution in Denmark. He was a pioneer and a trendsetter. 
disillusioned with existing education system, he established the first folk high school in 1844 where students were trained for life. Devastated by war and bankruptcy, Denmark was at its lowest ebb in the 19th century. The peasants who lived in the countryside were ruthlessly exploited. They had lost their spirit for innovation and initiative. After disastrous war with Prussia in 1864, the folk high school movement proliferated. Hundreds of folk high schools were started and young boys and girls were trained in these folk high schools in the art of life. Later, these individuals were instrumental in developing one of the most effective cooperative movements of the world. Such cooperatives transformed the country into a highly egalitarian and industrialized society. Today, over 70 folk high schools with different focus are spread across Denmark attracting students with varied interests. Thank you.